Hi guys, TC Lee here, and today I just wanted to show you my CloudRest main tank build, which is going to be suitable for main tanking Zamaja and Execute, but also doing the portals throughout the fight as well. So first of all, we've got the uh, the class. So this is a Nord, and this particular character is a Warden. I am going to cover Dragon Knight, Sorcerer, Templar, Necro, and Nightblade as well. But this one in particular is the one I've been playing recently, which is the Warden. And the Warden is very, very good for Cloud Rest. Um, they're, they're an excellent choice if you are learning to do it for the first time. Um, and even as an experienced player, they are very useful for the group and they bring a lot of group utility. So for this one, we've got uh, 64 points into health. We're using the Atronarch Munda Stone. Another good option is to use the Steed Munda Stone, a very, very good choice, um, especially for the portals. So if you combine the Steed Munda Stone uh, with uh, certain gear traits and food and potions, yeah, the Steed can be a very good choice as well, especially if you're a newer player. The Atronarch, when you're comfortable with the portals, um, and more so on a Warden, the Atronarch works better. The Steed is better on most other classes. And for the food, we're using Bewitched Sugar Skulls. Uh, that's given us a good spread of resources and a bit of health recovery as well. Health recovery is fairly useful in Cloud Rest. So if you are the Execute main tank and you are struggling to get up to full health, the problem might be that you've got too much health. So what you can do is you can switch your food for the Execute phase where you get hit by the Baneful Mark. And there's a couple of different options. So you could use a Max Magicka and Stamina food that would give you a, some higher uh, resources you could also go with because um, you don't really need the stamina in execute so you could go with a max magica that also gives health recovery so huge um, health recovery boost so th they are some options as long as you don't have health in the food that will kind of be helpful um, obviously your health is going to dip very low so you do have to be careful but on a warden and a Dragon Knight especially, it's not going to be an issue because you've got Igneous Shields, Shimmering Shields, Protective Plate, lots and lots of things that are going to um, support you with avoiding damage during that phase. We've also got potions. So potions for this fight are quite important. So we've got the standard Essence of Health Tristat potions um, that are going to give us all our resources and all three recoveries as well. So... These are the ones that I usually use in the main room when I'm tanking Zamaja. When I go into Execute or into the portals, I use these um, these potions here. So we've got Essence of Health, but these ones are a little bit different. So they do lingering health. They restore um, health per second. They give major vitality. Those are really, really helpful in the Execute phase. Um, so that is how you make those potions. Uh, they are... Reasonably expensive. The Powdered Mother of Pearl is quite an expensive ingredient generally. Um, but these potions, if you're struggling with the portals, if you're struggling um, in Execute, these potions will be extremely helpful. So definitely consider using those. So as mentioned before, we are a Nord. You could pretty much play any, um, any race for this trial. Argonian would work fine. Something such as a Breton will work really well in this trial because... There is no physical damage in this trial if you are the main tank and you're doing the portal and tanking to Marja. If you don't have the mini bosses, there's no physical damage. It's all spell damage, magicka damage. Um, so you could play Breton if, if that's what you've got um, because Breton is, is good for the reduced cost on the magicka abilities. It means you can heal yourself a lot easier in the portal. It also means um, that you're going to have a lot of spell um, spell resistance. So Breton is a good choice. Like I've said already, earlier, I am a Nord and I choose Nord for this just because that is my personal favourite tank class. But you can almost play any um, any class and any you can play any race um, in Cloud Rest. Any race works fine. But my top three would definitely be Nord, Argonian, and Breton. On to the gear. So. For this, we're going to be using Yolokrin, Alkosh, and Earthgore. For the weapon, it's decisive um, to generate our ultimate faster. I'm using Absorb Magicka enchantment on that. The enchantments on a huge um, game changer. 
You could use Absorb Stamina. You could also use a Charged Shock if your group has really low uptime on Minor Vulnerability. But you should be fine. You shouldn't need to run a Charged Shock on a Warden because we'd be using a skill that will provide that anyway. For the shield, I'm using Well Fitted. Um, the reason for that is because I have to do a lot of sprinting around the room and I do occasionally need to dodge roll certain mechanics. Um, so I, I, I use a one Well Fit shield. I'm using an Ice Staff, um, and that's an infused Crusher because we need to maintain the Crusher enchant to increase our group's DPS. I'm using an Ice Staff because of the Bar Swap mechanic where we could sometimes accidentally get stuck on our back bar. If we're using a lightning staff during that phase, it's going to be a lot more risky if we accidentally get stuck on our back bar and it's a lightning staff and then we get a heavy attack from Zamaja. There is a chance that we're going to be very much struggling to deal with that. So we're using eye staff for the safety option. It's, it's very much the safer way to go. Earthgore. Now we're using Earthgore um, infused on the helmet. That's a medium helmet. I'm using a light shoulder. That is Divines. Um, this is a great option. So, especially in the portal, when your health goes low, you use your self heal, and you're going to get yourself a 35k heal. Now that's spread out over 10 seconds. So it's a nearly 3,500 healing per second for 10 seconds, and you can proc it every 20 seconds. Now, the 20 seconds cooldown pretty much inlines itself with Baneful Mark and Execute as well. So you will have Earth Gore for every single Baneful Mar in the Execute phase. Because as soon as you get hit by it, you proc yourself heal. Um, that will activate Earth Gore. And you've got yourself a 35k heal. It's it's the best monster set by far. So we're using Yolnukrin for our other body piece. Um, as you may have seen there, we've got... Um, all the big pieces are infused. So the legs the chest and the head infused with the multi-effect enchantment. The small pieces are all divines with magicka. The reason we don't use um, tristat or health, obviously we don't want to have too high max health in this fight. We do need more magicka though, because we're relying heavily on a lot of healing. We're in the portal. We're, we're, gen we're trying to maintain a good level of magicka and magicka recovery. So we're going with, with maximum magicka just because stamina has no real use in this fight because it's so easy to heavy attack. We don't want health, so magicka is the next best option. Divine's magicka on the small pieces. For the jewellery, we're using three harmony um, with magicka recovery. For the execute phase, the harmony is absolutely vital for us bringing our health back to full if we're solo tanking. If you're not solo tanking, if you're switching the boss, or if you are not the main tank and execute, so somebody else is doing it and you're becoming essentially an off tank and execute, then you would just switch to three infused magicka recovery. So if you're switching the boss and execute, or you're not the main tank and execute where you're taking some Arger and dealing with the baneful mark, use infused. If you are taking some Marjorie and Execute and you are a main tank, then use Harmony. On to the skills. So we've got So we've got for skills. We're using Ransack um, for our first skill. This is a melee taunt. And that will give us um, minor protection, which is the reason why we're using this. So we're using this for the for the minor protection. This is quite a hard hitting trial in terms of the heavy attacks and the portal and the execute everything hits quite hard so we want to maintain that minor protection we're using heroic slash that's for the minor maim to reduce the enemy's damage by 15 percent but also the minor heroism so we're able to generate ultimate very very quickly in this trial as a as a warden due to the minor heroism and we also get major heroism from our next skill shimmering shield so shimmering shield gives us major heroism which means that we can basically get our Warhorn every 30 seconds. It's so quick to generate um, ultimate. This is one of the most important skills in this trial. So Shimmering Shield has got a 60k damage shield. So we cast it. And the three shields you see spinning around, that's the three um, shields. You can you can take basically take three hits 
so you, you're able to be hit by three things over the duration of that shield, which makes it extremely strong. Um, it can completely absorb Zamaja's heavy attack without you blocking as well. So you can just cast this ability. You don't need to be blocking. You can dodge roll, you can sprint, jump, spin around. It doesn't matter. You can be doing anything. And this shield will absorb the whole heavy attack from Zamaja. Other mechanics that it's good for in the portal, when the orbs have been exposed from the crystals by the DDs, you can use this because sometimes if the upstairs is slow at sending the shards downstairs, you could have three orbs in, in the portal that are hitting you constantly and also have Zamaja, Zamaja's shadow hitting you in the portal. So you can cast this and that will absorb those projectiles as well. So this is one of the main reasons why the Warden is so good in this trial. It's just so easy to play with Shimmer and Shield. Our next ability is Polar Wind. Now, Polar Wind is a very good self heal. Just as a base heal here, it's giving 11,580. And then it does a little heal over time as well for five seconds. It's very good because it's also healing somebody else. So, the good part about it is you're giving yourself a heal and somebody else. This can crit as well. So, that's just the base heal. This will be increased with other um, things such as Major Mending um, and things like that. They will also boost how much that will heal for. And it's a, and it's a, a two-person heal. So in the portal, if somebody is um, twelve within 12 meters of you, they've took a bit of damage, you heal yourself, it'll also give them a heal as well. So it's very strong in the portal mainly because you're going to give other people a heal. And obviously when you need to heal, it's a very big heal, and it can crit, and it can be much higher than actually the tooltip is saying. So it's an extremely good way to um, maintain your, your health. The next skill we're using is Leech in Vines. Now this, the main reason we're using this, because we're the main tank, we're the Execute tank. And with Leech in Vines, so the first part is we're using the Vines for the minor lifesteal. When I cast Leech in Vines, and it puts the Vines around my character, Anything that hits me now, any enemy that hits me while I've got the vines around me, will will have minor health steal applied to them. So when I cast vines, Zamaja hits me, and Zamaja gets minor health steal applied to it. And the reason why we need this is because of this passive that gives minor toughness. So we need to have minor life steal on the enemy, on the target, so that we can give minor toughness to the group. So that's how it works. So we cast Leeching Vines. Sometimes it won't hit us. Not every time, because it, it puts it on um, somebody, either you or somebody in front of you, who is the lowest health. So if everyone's in a stack and on full health, this is going to activate on you. It also gives 1,269 heals per second for 10 seconds. So when you combine that with the heal over time from Polar Wind, if you get this both activated on yourself, you've got Leeching Vines healing you, you've got Polar Wind healing you as well. So you've got some heals over time and some big heals. So we've covered that. So we've got Modern Life still. The other important reason for using Leeching Vines, so if we weren't the Execute main tank, we wouldn't be using Leeching Vines. We would be using Blood Altar instead. But because we we're with the Execute tank, we're having to deal with the Baneful Mark and we're not switching, with solo tanking it. We need to get Major Mending. And the way to get Major Mending is we need to use a green balance ability when when we're under 40% health. So when our health goes under 40%, we need to use a green balance ability. That will give us Major Mending. That means that we can heal up to full really, really easily. So the only, the only skill that's worth using in this tree for the tank is Leeching Vines because it's going to give the minor life steal. It's going to give us major mending, it's going to give us minor toughness, it's going to increase our healing done as well on the front bar which is where we need our healing, but also um, if it doesn't work on us, it's going to give us some resources back, so when you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain uh, magicka or stamina, so this is like a little bit of a resource tool as well, so if we, if, like it's every one second, so leeching vines heals every 10 seconds, if you should be casting it on cooldown throughout the fight anyway, because if it doesn't activate on you, it will activate on somebody else, and then it'll give you loads of resources back. So it's worth using. These are all extremely useful passives. So we need to have um, all, all of these passives maxed out and leeching vines for this part. 
the front bar ultimate we're using the Feral Guardian. The reason we're using Feral Guardian doesn't need to be morphed. We're using Feral Guardian again because of the passives. Increases your magicka and stamina recovery by 12% if an animal companion ability slide. We're not using the ultimate, it's just there for the 12% magicka recovery. There's no other reason to have it there. So this is the main reason we have it. This is the we need to have this passive to benefit from that. If we were the um, if we weren't the main tank and execute, you wouldn't need to run this. You could use uh, barrier for 10% magic recovery, and then you could have fetch your infection on your front bar, and you'd put blood altar on your back bar. So if we weren't dealing with Zamadri and execute. Fetch your infection would go on the front bar, so then we wouldn't need this ultimate, we'd use barrier, and then we'd use blood altar on the back bar. Um, the next um, bar, we've got inner rage, which is our range taunt. Um, so we're just using that to, to taunt at range when the boss teleports across the room to make sure we don't lose taunt. Elemental drain. So this is um, an important thing to note, is that we don't need to use pierced armor. So we use ransack, and we benefit from the minor protection because we're using Elemental Drain. So Elemental Drain does the same thing as Pierced Armor. Um, it also gives the group Minor Magicka Steel. And the reason we're using this is because we need it for the crystals in the portal, first of all. So the crystals in the portal need to be Ellie Drained so that they have the major breach on them for the DDs in the portal to do more damage, but also for the Minor Magicka Steel so the guys in the portal that are attacking the crystals can get Magicka back and they can sustain better and be able to kill the crystals more efficiently. You might also be asked to actually use Ellie Drain in the main room, so in some groups the healers won't use Ellie Drain because if they've got two tanks with Ellie Drain, the two main tanks that are both going into the portals and doing the main boss, they need to have Ellie Drain on them. So they will just Ellie Drain the main boss, they'll Ellie Drain the orbs and, and things like that, so the, the healers don't always use Ellie Drain, so you will need to pro possibly use that on other things as well. We've got Blockade, and we're using this obviously to proc our crusher and to maintain that throughout the fight so obviously we cast um, when we cast blockade even when we switch to our front bar the whole time the blockade is there it will continue to proc crusher on the enemy so the whole time you, you your enchant only lasts for four seconds but obviously blockade lasts a lot longer so blockade lasts for 14 seconds so every four seconds it'll just reproc your enchant it'll reproc crusher every single time um, and so we need that to maintain that that debuff on Zamarja um, because that, that is going to mean our DDs do more damage. Expansive Frost Cloak. So, this is another important ability. This is going to give everybody in our group major resolve. And it's got a 28 meter range. The other morph is unnecessary because it also gives, it, it's got a much smaller radius and it gives us minor protection, which we don't need because we're using Ransack. So, this is the better morph because. This has got a huge radius, so everybody in the room is going to get this. Even your kite healer, everybody. And giving everybody over 5k resistances is going to increase the survivability of your group. So this is very important to use this. Uh, then we've got Fetch Your Infection. Um, this is a debuff on, on the enemy, so you basically need to try and keep this on Zamaja as much as you can throughout the fight. It gives minor vulnerability, meaning that your group will do 8% more damage to whichever target you've got this applied to. So it's absolutely important to keep this to increase your group's damage. Um, and it also, on your bar, it will give you the 12% magicka recovery, like we mentioned already, by having the animal companion ability. This is that animal companion ability for the back bar. Um, and because it's not a priority skill, this is why it's on the back bar, even though it has to be cast like every 10 seconds. It's on the back bar because we need leeching vines and execute, and that needs to be on our front bar. Aggressive Horn, so obviously this is our only used ultimate. This is increasing, uh, major, made, giving the group major force, increasing their crit damage, and it will increase your max magic and stamina by 10% for 30 seconds. So this is the ultimate that we want to use, and we're able to generate this around about every 30 seconds as a Warden tank with all the sources we've got of um, heroism and ulti, ulti gain. So let's quickly go over the passives. So obviously the vital passives here. Um, you want Bond with Nature, so when one of your animal companion ability ends, you're healed. Because when your Fetcher Infection ends every 10 seconds, you'll get a little heal. Um, Savage Beast, so we're going to be casting again. We're going to be casting Fetcher Infection, so that's going to give us the ultimate gain from Savage Beast. 
You don't need advanced species because the damage isn't important. If you want to, if you have the spare skill points, then you can use it, but you don't need it. Green balance, obviously, we've already mentioned all of the green balance passes are vital and needed to improve your group. Winter's embrace. You could use all the passes again. The main ones are the first three: piercing cold, increasing your magic and flash damage. You can take it, but you don't need it. It's not a vital passive. One hand and shield. We just use all of the passives because obviously that's our main, um, our main bar, our sword and shield bar. So we, we we need to take all the passives from that one. Destruction staff. You don't want to use the trifocus passive. So fully charged heavy attacks with a frost staff taunt the enemy. They take too long, so we're not going to be using the fully charged frost staff heavy attack. We also don't want to block with. Um, Magicka, so we don't want to be blocked with Magicka. Magicka is very, very important in this trial because we need to heal a lot. We need to be doing a lot of Magicka based abilities. We need to keep up a lot of Magicka based buffs. So we can't afford to waste our magic by blocking. We can block using stamina. We can heavy attack to get our stamina back. We won't be tanking the whole fight. So when you first, when you switch tanks with the main boss um, during the main part of the fight, so one of the tanks comes out the portal, you switch the boss around. You've got seconds there where you won't be blocking and you're able to generate stamina. So you definitely don't want to be blocking with Magicka because it'll mean you won't be able to heal, you won't be able to cast your buffs, and that's going to cause you more problems. Penetrating Magic, so you could use that to increase your damage slightly. Elemental Force, you can keep that. Um, that that's not a bad one to have. And then Ancient Knowledge, so that we can increase the amount of damage um, that our Frost Staff can block, but also and reduces the cost of blocking when we're using our frost staff. Since we're using 511, we want the um, light armor passives. So the first three are the light armor passives that you need. Grace, which is going to give us the um, reduced cost. So it's going to give us reduced cost um, of sprint. It's going to reduce snares, which is kind of good when we're dealing with the ice boss. Um, and it's giving you that really, really big snare. Magicka recovery and Magicka cast, and obviously spell resistance because we're only taking we're only taking spell damage in this trial anyway, so spell resistance is good. Medium armor, we're using five on one, so the the two main ones are Windwalker, um, reduce the stamina cost of your abilities, and then Athletics, which is going to increase the movement bonus of sprint. So we're going to be sprinting across the room to get to some modules, so that's good. Reduce cost of dodge roll, good as well. Heavy armor passives, we just need to use them all. We're going to be using five heavy, so we need the heavy armor passives. Undaunted, you want Undaunted Command and Undaunted Metal. That's going to because we're using five on one, it's going to give us a 6% bonus to our health, stamina, and magicka. Undaunted Command, because we're using Alkosh, so we're going to be activating synergies to try and maintain our Alkosh, so we also get resources back when we do that. If you are using Barrier, as we mentioned before, so you don't need to morph Barrier, you just use Barrier, and then you need the two Magicka Aid passives to give you the 10% Magicka Recovery. So on 2 out of 2, that'll give you 10% Magicka Recovery. And obviously, as a Nord, you want to be using all your class... Uh, you want to be using all your racial passives as, as wh whichever race you are. Finally, you want Medicinal Use. Obviously, it's better if you've got Alchemy maxed out to 50 and then you want the three medicinal use passives which will give you a longer duration on your potions so there we go that is the warden build for cloud rest cloud rest hard mode i'm also going to show you some quick setups for other classes as well so another popular class is also the dragon knight um here are the dragon knight skills so it's a very similar setup um, the only difference being, obviously, you don't have expansive frost cloak, so you would use uh, balance instead. You don't have fetcher infection, so you would use protective plate, and that's going to reduce your incoming damage from projectiles by 50%. So that's important when you're taking the heavy attacks from Zamarja. Use protective plate; it's going to reduce the damage. Um, if you get stuck on your back bar as well, it's good because you're going to be on your ice staff, and then you can use protective plate to reduce the damage. But then when you're on your front bar, you've got the heal to deal with it. The main reason for using a dragon knight is because of the stagger, which comes from stone giant. So that is the main thing you should be using if you were using a dragon knight. You need to be using stone giant. You need to be using stagger. That is the reason why you are there. 
It's much easier to maintain stagger if you are the off tank though. So if you are one of the main tanks, you're in and out the portal. It is a bit more tricky because you're not going to be there for some of the fight. So it's ideal to have it potentially on the off tank if that's possible. Um, and then obviously Igneous Shield because it's a great shield. It gives a group shield as well. It gives you a shield and that works out really well. Next we've got the Sorcerer. So this is the Sorcerer option. Um, so we use the same again. Ransack, we use Heroic Slash. Um, we use Bound Aegis for this one. And it's... Um, so you're going to use that when you're about to take a heavy attack. Cast Bound Aegis. It's going to reduce the, the damage from the heavy attacks. It's going to be good for the portal. If you're taking a lot of damage in the portal, cast Bound Aegis. It's going to reduce your incoming damage. It gives you 40% more damage mitigation. Very, very strong. You need to use the Unstable Clan Fear. That's going to give you a really, really big self-heal. It's a great self-heal. Um, so that's vital to use that. The last skill on the front bar, so you've got Restraining Prison. Now this isn't going to restrain anything, but what happens is when you cast Restraining Prison at an enemy, even if it's an elite enemy or it's a boss, it's not going to restrain them, it's not going to do anything, but it will still give you the buff, and the buff is Major Vitality, which is going to increase your healing by 30%, your healing received by 30%. The main reason for using the Sorcerer is for the Minor Prophecy, and that will come to us via restraining prison so that's one of the other reasons why we use restraining prison is because it's going to proc our sorcerer group buff um, the minor prophecy which is quite important it provides around a 2k dps increase to your magicka dds um, and then obviously barrier on the front bar there for the for the magicka recovery so again so we'd use balance for the Ma magicka sustain and yeah that, that's that's the sorcerer so we've got the Necro now. The Necro is a little bit more tricky, so the Necro is not quite as strong as the other three that we've mentioned so far. Um, so you'd use Avid Boneyard for this one, and that is to give yourself a self synergy. So because you're the main tank, you're going to be using Alkosh. You want to give yourself a self synergy, so you're going to be using Avid, Avid Boneyard for that. You've then got your main heal, which is the Hungry Scythe. That's going to be the thing that you use to heal yourself. It's not quite as strong as some of the other healing abilities, because you might have to cast it to two times to get the equivalent heal of other classes get from, from one button press. So it is a little bit more resource intensive, um, but it does give a heal over time as well. Because our self healing isn't as strong as the other three classes, we are going to use Absorb Missile for this one. You're going to cast that before you get a heavy attack coming from Zamarja, it's going to absorb it and heal you slightly. So yeah, Absorb absorb Missile is quite important for this one, just because our self healing is slightly slightly smaller than than the other three classes mentioned already. On a back bar, the only difference really is going to be the Spirit Mender. The reason we're using the Spirit Mender is it gives us 200 Magicka Recovery by having it, and it also gives us a heal, and it absorbs 10% of our damage. So it, we share some of our damage with the Spirit Mender, so you want to keep this up as much as you can throughout the fight. The only problem with the Spirit Mender is it can drift off and go and heal other people. So if somebody goes lower health than you, it will drift off to somebody else. So this, this is why the Necro isn't as strong at healing because things like Spirit Mender are a good skill, but it can go off and heal other people when you need it. So it's not quite as strong as other things. Um, then we're using the Colossus. This is the only real reason to use um, a Necro. So if your group doesn't have any Necros or your group only has one Necro, then a Necro Tank is the option for the Colossus. And that is the main reason why you would use one. Next, we're on to the Templar. Now, the Templar is possibly one of the most difficult to play in Cloudrest, especially in the portals. They've got very weak self-healing, um, and we have to rely heavily on shields. So, for this one, you would use Radiant Ward, um, and that's to just try and reduce a lot of the, as much of the damage as you can, because you don't really have any healing that is good. You can't use Breath of Life because that scales off Max Magicka. The heal from it is very weak, and it also costs over 5k Magicka to cast. The problem with it is it can also heal somebody else instead of yourself, so it's not great. Um, so the, our main heal is Resolving Vigor, and that isn't a burst heal, it's a heal over time. So if you're taking simultaneous uh, pieces of damage, you're going to be in a very, very difficult situation. Because of the low self-healing, again, we're going to be using another healing skill, Extended Ritual. So we're using Extended Ritual and Resolving Vigor. They're two heals over time. And then we're casting Radiant Ward as much as possible to try and just strip as much of the damage away as possible. And our main reason for using the Templar tank is because of Power of the Light, which is going to give us Minor Breach. 
um, which is increasing um, the amount of breach we have on the enemy. We can kill everything faster, and you're just going to do more damage. But also, it procs the Templar group buff, the minor sorcery. Finally, we've got the Nightblade tank. So the Nightblade tank is the absolute worst class to use for cloud rest, and that is just on the perspective that there is no benefit to using one. There's no group buffs that it's providing. Cloud rest is well known for being a magicka focus trial where it's mostly it's most groups just take all magicka damage dealers and in that case the nightblade tank doesn't provide a single group buff it provides nothing to the group and it's more difficult to play than most of the others because again it's similar in a similar way to where the templar doesn't have a burst heal the nightblade has dark cloak which is a heal over time but it's a bit stronger than using resolving vigor for example we use swallowed soul um, on the front bar, that is for one, the healing, and two, for the passive that's going to give us ultimate. We're then using Dark Cloak for our heal over time, which is our burst heal. You can heal for 8k per second when it's fully maxed out, when you're fully buffed up, when it crits, it can be healing for 8k a second. But generally, it'll be around 4 to 5k per second. So, obviously, if you're taking a 25k hit of damage, it's going to take a few seconds to get back up to full. It is a little bit more of a struggle. For that reason, we use Absorb Missile again, and that's just to try and absorb some of the damage so that we have less to heal up, and that kind of helps us with that one. On the back bar, we've got Leeching Strikes. That's going to just help us sustain. It's going to proc some passives, and that, that's the main reason for that. Now, finally, we've got last last couple of uh, skills that we need to just go over. So you could use Crushing Shock for a ranged interrupt. So there is situations where Zamarja will teleport across the room, especially in the portal. So crushing shot could be used for that situation, so you can do a ranged interrupt. So it, it, it isn't completely necessary, but crushing shock could be used. So force shock, crushing shock. I, I, I don't use it myself, and I, I've never needed it because I make it across the room when I'm in the portal. I'm always stood fairly close to the middle of the room, so even when he tele when Zamaja teleports, I'm always close enough that I can just walk over and bash it, even after jumping up on the side. The other skill uh, you might need, so you've got a chaining ability. The, the problem we've got, if you are the main tank and execute, you're going to struggle to find space for these skills. There is nothing on your bar that you could remove. You would use Frozen Gate, and that would teleport enemies to you. So you want to use that so you can place them on the portal, and then you can teleport the enemies to you. So you place it down. When the enemies walk into it, you pull them. If you're on a DK, you'd use Unrelenting Grip. If you're on anything else, you'd use Silver Leash. But generally, like I say, same problem. There's not enough space on the bar for it. If you're the off-tank, it's probably more useful for the off tank to be using these skills and chaining the ads. Champion points, finally. Um, so for the red CP, we're using 81 Ironclad, 16 in Spell Shield. We're using 66 Thick Skinned, 64 Elemental Defender, and 43 into Quick Recovery. If you want a DK, you could use the 16 points here and put them into Bastion. That would increase the amount of shielding um, you get from your Igneous Shield. Um, and also your group shield from that as well. You don't need heavy armor focus because we're not taking any physical damage. And that's also the reason why we don't use any hardy. If you are taking the adds at any point, so the mini bosses, you probably would need a few points into hardy, but you don't need that many. Green CP, we've got 48 in Warlord just in case we need to break free. Break free is an extremely expensive thing to do. So we use 48 Warlord. If we get hit by an orb, or we get hit by something where we're stunned, we can break free, it costs 18% less. 23 into Sprinter, because we are sprinting around the room quite often when Zamaja teleports from one side of the room to the other, we are sprinting to get there before the Mind Blast can hit the group. 64 um, points into there for the Magicka Recovery, and 32 into Tenacity, because we are kind of generating most of our stamina by heavy attacking. Uh, we're, not blocking a, we're not blocking much at all during this trial, but we are going to be heavy attacking for the stam region. 37 tumbling, there isn't a huge amount of dodge rolling but we do want points in there for the few times that we will dodge roll. 66 shadow ward, it's not necessary to really put much more than that, 66 is fine, 22% reduced cost of block. We don't block that often so we don't have to like really ramp the points into here too high. Finally, we've got 64 Blessed and 56 Elf Ball, and that's to just increase the amount of healing we're doing with our abilities. We're trying to, we've got 30 points into this tree just for the repost passive. 
and then the last bit you can just spread 120 points however you want here the important thing here is to get the last stand passive so you need 120 points in the mage um, tree in the ritual for the last stand passive that's going to give major heroism um, again another source of major heroism um, and this is every time we get hit with a baneful mark that's going to proc the last stand passive so finally the last thing I just wanted to discuss was the execute phase so when in the execute phase um, when we get hit with baneful mark it's essentially very easy on a warden so you would cast leeching vines firstly so you get hit by the baneful mark you cast leeching vines leeching vines will hit you in execute phase during the baneful mark leeching vines will proc one it'll proc your earth gore it also give you major mending and it will also give you that heal over time you then cast polar wind for the other heal over time you get another heal over time from that and then you use the blood altar synergy so there should be a blood altar being used one of the healers should be using it and then you use your blood altar synergy and if you need to you top it up with another polar wind if you don't have full health at that point you then use the special potions we talked about earlier the essence of health and you should be able to get back up to full health very very easily by doing that if you want to dk it's a similar thing where you just have to press a couple of buttons you press igneous shield green dragon blood then blood altar synergy on a sorcerer it'd be restraining prison Clan Fear, Alter Synergy. The others for the Templar, the Necro, um, and the, the Nightblade, I don't really know. I've not really tried those in Execute because there's no need for me to do that. There's no point in doing it. There's no point in having those um, particular classes trying to do the Execute because it's so much more difficult. So it's not really worth trying to attempt that. But yeah, th this was my Cloud Rest build. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found the information useful. If you haven't seen my Discord yet, the Tank Club, make sure you check that out. The link's in the description below. We've got over 3,000 members in there now, and it's full of builds, written guides, lots of chat and help. So check that out, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.